and she's like, can you take her? And I'm like, um, um, let me, yeah. And I grabbed Benji and I was like, are we okay to take her? And I'm thinking it's gonna be like a week, right? So I say to them, sure, we have decided that we will take her. We are excited to take her. And she said, okay, good, because I just pulled up in front of your house. <laughs> so. Yeah. Get busy. Get busy. Everybody get, get busy. I need y'all to report to the dance floor right this minute. yummiest cupcakes ever and we're going to eat these cupcakes while we talk about a really special day. <laughs> so the day that we are going to talk about is going to be part of a series we're going to talk about with all of the kids and the series is going to be called The Day I Met You. So we're starting off with Navy. I don't know why but we just always do with all of our series yeah. when it comes to adoption. She's just the most willing maybe that's why I don't know but we are going to talk about the very first day that we met. And so, before we get started, make sure you subscribe down below, hit the notification bell, give this video a big thumbs up, and follow us on Instagram, <laughs> Facebook, and maybe if our TikTok ever comes back, TikTok. Yep. <laughs> All right, so I have to first set it up. The first day, wait, you have a little bit of chocolate on your face. <laughs> All right, so I have to back up. The first day, it was a crazy day. We had just moved to where we were living and we hadn't been there for very long and all of our family, dad's family, my family, everyone lived like four hours away, right? So we had moved there, it had been a couple months and Journey was actually getting baptized that weekend. So all of the family from far away was staying at our house. <laughs> and so it was a little bit of a chaotic day, you can imagine, right? Yeah. So it was a little bit of chaos and crazy. But by this point, guys, I had had my experience with Lily, and if you need to know more about that, you can watch Lily's adoption video. But I can try. <laughs> She's dropping her time. Maybe these cupcakes weren't the best one. Anyway, so I had signed up and did all the classes and everything to do foster care, right? So I get this phone call, okay? Literally, I had people out the ears. I mean, there was literally like people in every room. There was children running all over. My children were running all over. At this point, I only had six kids. I mean, that kind of sounds funny because only had six kids. Six kids is a lot, but it, yeah. for me, it's not. I only had six kids. So they were running all over. Everything was crazy. Journey was nine, and I'll tell you more about her story on her turn, but it was crazy. So anyway, I get a phone call, and the phone call is like, hey, I have this cute little baby. She's a little baby girl. She's two months. Got a little bit of chocolate on the baby girl. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> she was two months old, she said. And she's like, can you take her? And I'm like, um, um. Let me, yeah, and I grabbed Benji and I was like, are we okay to take her? And I'm thinking it's gonna be like a week, right? So I say to them, sure, we have decided that we will take her. We are excited to take her. And she said, okay, good, because I just pulled up in front of your house. <laughs> so, yeah, it was pretty like crazy. So anyway, she knocks on the door and literally chaos everywhere in the house. I open the door and I see my baby girl and she's in a car seat. She's carrying her in this little car seat. And it's literally like the whole house chaos just went shh. And it was no longer even loud to me. All I saw was this cute little baby girl. You were so cute. <laughs> she was so cute. She had tons of crazy hair and her big eyes were looking all over the place. She was a little bit distraught, like she looked like she had been through a little bit of a hard time, which she had, and I'll tell you more about that in a second. But So the caseworker walked in, she sat in my family room, she handed me the formula, she handed me this little tiny bag of diapers, she had, she had a few diapers, she handed me this file, like this little folder thingy with some random papers in it, and that was it. And she just said, 
Okay, we'll let you know how things are going. We'll call you in a couple days. I'm like, <laughs> Holy cow, this new little born baby is sitting here in this car seat in my house. I'm trying to prepare things, of course, for the baptism and everything, but literally I was just like, I can't believe the awesome responsibility. Like you just left this sweet baby with me, <laughs> right? So anyways, I won't stop to eat. I've ate only half of mine. How much have you ate of yours? Oh, you're doing good. So after the lady left, I sat there in awe thinking, okay, I cannot believe that this is my responsibility, my sweet baby. And I took her out of her car seat. She was so cute and so sweet. She couldn't even hold her head up yet. She was like, her little head was still. You know how those little newborn babies, they can't even hold up their yeah. head. That's how little you were. You were that teeny. So I got her out. I didn't have any clothes for her. I didn't have anything for her, just a diaper. And I'm like, okay, so I sent Benji. Will you hurry and go get some little baby girl clothes? And I decided to bath her. And so it, it was so cute. There was a beat. <laughs> it was so cute, you guys. So I got you all undressed and I had this laundry sink. It was like a pretty deep laundry sink. So I washed that out, made sure it was nice and clean and plugged it and filled it up with warm soapy water. And I put this little dirty baby down in the water and you were so cute. And I just washed you off, washed you off. And got all the gick out from underneath her neck and behind her ears and her little hands. And remember, if you watch our other video about her adoption, you'll know this story. But I wanted to wash her hands, but she had what was called meth hands um, from just being around methamphetamines. And so her hands were so tight, like I had to try to pry her little fingers open to try to wash them. And there was just all this gook in all of the crevices and I would just wash washing them all out and washing her all soapy. She was so cute. And then I wrapped her in a little towel. And I still, I think I have pictures. I'm gonna put pictures here when I wrapped you in the towel because you were so cute. And I just held her and thought, oh my gosh, this sweet baby. And you know, at that moment I thought, well, I'm probably just loving this sweet baby for her mom who's gonna get her back. And hopefully she can get her life together and get her back. And that's what my focus was as far as that day went. Little did I know what her story would be. And again, you can watch more of that on her adoption story, but little did I know that you would end up being my little baby, Grace. <laughs> that time your name was Unique Destiny, right? Yep. So she did have a unique destiny, that's for sure. And <laughs> it was to be with us. And so after that first day, we loved on her and hugged on her and Kennedy fell in love. The very first day, I'm not kidding you. Kennedy was like, no, she is not. And I'm like, Kennedy, she's probably gonna go have to go back to her family if her mom starts doing things right. Nope, she's not mom. All the way through, the whole entire time that we fostered, <laughs> every time that she came back and forth, Kennedy, every single time, was like, no mom, I'm telling you, she's gonna end up with our family. She's gonna be our baby girl forever. We used to call her baby girl. For some reason, I couldn't bring myself to call her unique destiny. I don't know why. I just, it's hard for me to call babies any name. Even the names that I've given them, it's hard for me to call them a big name when they're just so little. So I called her baby girl and that just stuck. And so Kennedy would always say, mom, baby girl's gonna end up being our little girl. I just know it. Was she right? Yep. Yeah, she was right. So after the first day, if you guys have listened to her birth story before, you know that Navy was with us for the whole entire first year of her life until she was one is when she went back to her mom. And that was super hard. And, but like I said before, like I was able to feel like I was kind of like adopting her mom and helping her mom and helping her mom love her and stay clean. And it just worked out that we, became pretty good friends and it ended up that I could take Navy actually into a daycare. I started running a daycare just so that I could have Navy in my daycare with us. And so the time went on and she went a lot back and forth, right? Do you remember any of the times when you were going back and forth? Do you remember anything at all? Yeah. What's your, <laughs> what do you remember? What do you remember? I remember when I would get dropped off and I was always scared mm -hmm. and we would say like a prayer and like I was too scared to go back and so I would want to stay back where I was and so I would I would hold on to the like what are they called like the handle the handle car of the, the like, car handles the car handles like of the seat and oh, I would just <laughs> yes the size of the seat yes I remember that and I would not go back yeah I was just so scared yeah I remember I remember you would kick and hit your mom and you even went because you were like seven and she was really really mature but when it came to that, she was just so full of fear. It was like so scary for her. And so huh, you yeah. would just cry. Even when we'd start driving up, she'd start crying and we'd be like, it's okay, baby girl, come here. And we would just hold her in. 
That's so sad now it thinking is. about it. It got to the point where that was just, it was just so scary for her back and forth that I think that her biological mom realized that it just wasn't good. What she was busy and mixed up with wasn't good for kids. And so she kind of just stopped and then she actually, I think, went to jail at that time. And so anyways, it was basically had been about two and a half years of back and forth um, for the first like maybe six months. And then we just kind of cut it off. But after two and a half years, we finally were able to call the DCFS and finalize the adoption so that Navy wasn't afraid anymore. The final straw with me deciding to call the DCFS and get it official that Navy was ours was, do you remember where we ran into your biological mom at? We were at a store. Yeah. Do you remember? You don't remember? No, I don't remember. <sighs> so I you saw her. She didn't see you, but you saw her. And she was in a different part of the store with Janie. And she came running to me. And I thought, I don't know. I didn't know what happened. She like was like a cat trying to climb up me. Like I was like, what's the matter? And she's like, she's here. She's here. And she was like, oh, so yeah. panicked. Do you remember? I remember that. You were so panicked. It uh, was so sad. At the DI. Yes. Yes. And she was trying to climb up me. And she's like, what should we do? What should we do? And I'm like, you're okay. No, no. What should we do? And so we ended up just leaving because she was so afraid to see her and I think afraid that she could take her, right? You, yeah. She had taken you back and forth so many times. I think she was just so afraid that she could take her, had that power to take her. And so literally, like, after we left the store that night, I called the DCFS and said, Kate, okay, she's pretty much been abandoned. I would like you to help me finalize this so she can feel like she is stable and safe and part of a forever home. And then it was so cute because it took like a year and a half to do that, to finalize it. But when do you remember it? You probably don't remember this when the judge <laughs> Oh yeah, I remember you, that. He's like, well, how do you feel about the Nelsons? How do you, you know, what do you think about them adopting you? And she just talked to him so cute. And do you remember what you said? You probably don't remember. It was so I cute. can't imagine me crying though. I know she did. She started crying right there to the judge and the whole court. Everybody in the courtroom was crying. It wasn't even just the judge, but even the judge started crying because it was so cute. And she put her little hand right here, like this, on her chest. It was so cute. She put it right here and she said, I want to be with them because I finally feel safe. And it was so cute. Do you remember that? Oh my gosh, and she was like fighting back the tears. She was like, I finally feel safe. Oh, everybody was <laughs> crying, and I was crying. Oh, so cute. And I just like rewind in my mind to that first day that I got Navy, and I just, I don't know. I wish I could go back and tell that version of myself, it's gonna be okay. She's gonna be part of your family, because it was so hard to have her go back and forth and to give her back to her mom and get her again when she was three and give her back to her mom and get her again when she's six. Like, it was so hard, but Kennedy knew all along. I'm telling you, Kennedy kept saying, Mom, one time, I'll listen to this, this is kind of funny. <laughs> one time we were going to a grocery store and I think at the time we had like 10 or 11 kids and a lady like offered us her cart that was, you know, it was going into her car. She said, do you need my cart? We're like, oh sure. And she said, oh, I love big families. And, and we said, yeah. And she said, yeah, I grew up and I had 15 siblings. And I remember Kennedy like doing the math in her mind and she's like, Mom, do you realize that if we adopted Navy, and if we end up, because at the time we didn't have Delaney and Elsie and there wasn't Beckham, we did, that wasn't official, we had just barely got them placed. And she said, and if we adopt those three, we could end up having that many kids. And I remember being like, oh no, that's never gonna happen. Like, we're never gonna have 15 kids. <laughs> Little did I know we would have 16 kids. <laughs> Crazy. Anyways guys, yeah. that's the story of the first day I met Navy Grace <laughs> and anyway I love doing these stories I love talking about the first day and like the first moment our eyes met and all of that I would love to talk to you about all of them so if you like this video and you want this series to continue make sure you give it a big thumbs up subscribe down below and follow us on all of our social media thank you guys so much for watching Mwah.